it going, guys? Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Parker Swigert. Um, I... I'm not currently a student, but I'm affiliated with uh, Grandview's Campus Fellowship. And I went to DMAC for a little bit too, so go Bears! Uh, before I get started, just let me pray real quick. Uh, God, I just pray that uh, as I speak tonight, Lord, that the glory would be to you, God, and that this would not be an opportunity for me to lift up or glorify myself, but I uh, just pray that you would be uh, lifted up today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so uh, growing up, I wouldn't say that I grew up in a Christian household, although I attended church regularly with my mom. Um, my parents were divorced before I was old enough to remember them being together. I thought it was odd, but I didn't really think much of it. Um, I was back and forth between houses every other weekend and when I needed a place to go while my mom was working during school breaks. Um, my mom is a faithful Christian who taught me the word of God and stressed the importance of having a relationship with Jesus by, from a young age. Uh, by the time I was 10, I understood that Jesus uh, had died for my sins and that there was nothing I could do to earn or work my way into heaven, uh, but I was missing a huge part of the gospel. As I made my way through middle school and high school, the weight and reality of growing up in a broken household um, started to set in. I was constantly getting fed new uh, ideas and getting pushed in different directions. Uh, people at home always seemed to be angry at one another, but I, the people pleaser, always wanted to make everybody else happy. So I bottled up my own emotions, hid them from everyone but my mom. Uh, this led me to extreme anxiety and loneliness. So I started to seek out my own outlets, as I would call them. Uh, I kept myself busy constantly during high school, finding any way I could not to be at home. I would do anything to feel superior to those around me, uh, staying away from anyone who I felt was undeserving of my attention and couldn't provide me with something I didn't already have. Uh, I became a product of my own pride and ego, found myself uh, addicted to porn by the time I was 15. When I was 17, I started to seek out sexually immoral relationships. By the time my senior year of high school came around, my pride and lust and greed ruled my life. Um, but this is also when God started to reveal himself to me truly. I knew what his word said about the way that I was living. It clearly says that the wages of sin is death. However, I thought to myself, I have a long life ahead of me and I'll get back on the tracks so when I'm older and all my problems go away. Um, but late my senior year of high school, it became real to me just how short life can be. Um, my cousin lost the battle to mental illness and depression and took his own life just two months before we were supposed to graduate. Uh, my world turned upside down. Uh, now I had a whole other mix of emotions to throw in the pot. Rather than running to God and asking for forgiveness for my sins and asking him to take my burdens away, I just kept bottling things up and went on indulging in my sins like they would take the pain away. This only left me feeling emptier. Life went on for this, like this for about a year. Um, I graduated and went to DMAC, not sure who I was. I didn't feel like I was living the life that I should be, but I didn't see any reason to change. I figured if Jesus had died for my sins, then I shouldn't feel so guilty, um, but I did. I remember sitting in church one Sunday, early spring of 2020, paying attention for the first time in quite a while, and hearing the guest speaker that day clearly proclaim the gospel. Uh, talk about the transformation of our hearts when we let Christ in. I knew that I needed to seriously consider who the God I proclaimed to know really was and what needed to change my life. Shortly after this, uh, COVID practically shut down the world. I lost my grandpa, who I had grown particularly close to that last year, and I moved in my, with my grandma so she wouldn't have to come home to an empty house all the time. Over that summer, I made a genuine effort to regularly attend church with my grandma and spend time in prayer. I remember lying in bed awake so many nights pondering over who God was and asking him to put me on a better path and lead me to him. I began to realize the reason that God had been allowing me to suffer so much was just so I could learn to trust him. Um, Romans 5, 3 through 8 says, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character. Character produces hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. 
For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one would scarcely die for a righteous person, though for a good person, one would even dare to die. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Um, over the summer of 2020, work got slow, and I started to talk to co- my coworkers a lot more often, one of whom was none other than Chris Guest. Uh, <laughs> I only worked with him twice, once in early spring, um, before my grandpa passed away and the world had shut down and everything, um, and once in August, right before school was supposed to start. And so we had a lot to catch up on. I told him that I had spent the year digging into my relationship with God, and he invited me to a campus fellowship game night at the Hive. I was super excited to go and hang out with him, so I got there right on time, and he was nowhere to be found. (laughs) (laughs) But I got greeted with the most welcoming and genuinely joyful people I had ever met, and immediately knew that they were different from everyone else I knew, and I wondered what they had. Uh, Over that fall, I began to make some of the best friends I could ever ask for. I was spending nearly all of my free time with Chris, Mitchell, and Malik, uh, constantly being poured into and sanctified. As they read the Bible with me and helped me understand, it became very clear to me that the part of the gospel that I was missing was that God was even more deserving of my life than I was unworthy of his grace. Uh, Romans 5, 9 through 11 says that, therefore, since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more will we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, so much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life. Uh, More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through uh, whom we have now received reconciliation. Uh, One night after church, I was going to get pizza with Chris, and I realized that I had actually said a prayer to God, um, handing my life over to him. And so we stopped right there in the Blaze Pizza parking lot, and I did it right then. I have no clue if this was the actual point in time that I was saved or if it happened long before that, but I know now that I am justified by God's work, or by Christ's work on the cross. Um, This is not to say that I never sin or I am somehow perfect. I still fall into sin, whether it be lust, greed, pride, or anything else that I need to repent of on a regular basis. But I hold fast to God's word that says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. Um, And I can thank God for all the sin I've been set free from. That's my story, guys. Thanks for listening. (laughs)